What's going on guys? Welcome back to the final video in our CZ455 Rimfire build. I believe this is part 3 of the video. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2, I'm going to link that up down below. Go make sure you watch those so you can see the whole progression that this rifle behind me has gone through. So we started off with the CZ455 in its thumb hole stock as it shipped from the factory. I shot it like that, did some ammo testing. Now the thing with Rimfire is you really want to buy a box of everything and kind of shoot that and see what works for your specific rifle. Now in the CZ455 behind me, this is the bull barrel version. I have found Norma Match. Let me see if I can get that to focus for you guys. I found the Norma Match to be very consistent and very accurate in this rifle system. Now Super one thing that's very important, somebody has commented before do you want to shoot the high velocity ammo or do you want to shoot subsonic ammo? Now I found personally shooting the subsonic ammo gave me a better result just because the 22 long rifle bullet doesn't do very well when it comes from the supersonic to the transonic. When it goes through that uh, transition it does funny things and we're not shooting at crazy distances out to 400 yards even though I have done that with this. It's way easier to do that with subsonic ammo than with high velocity ammo. Right, so let me take you guys through all the modifications we've done on this rifle. So the rifle is safe. I'm just for the purposes I'm gonna pull our nice APW chamber flag and just confirm everything is clear. So starting from the front to back. So one of the first modifications I did, which was kind of a waste of money, I'm gonna be honest, is well, I get free gunsmithing, which I'm very thankful for at Bullet Central, but uh, they did a little thread job for me and they put a new, actually no, they didn't put a new crown on this. They threaded the muzzle for me just so that when I do the odd bit of varminting or shooting of funny critters with the 22 long rifle, I can put a suppressor on. Now, importantly, I've had very interesting conversations with people that know way more about the engineering, about what happens ballistically when you shoot a 22 long rifle through a silencer and pretty much the consensus is don't do it. If you want extreme accuracy, don't shoot through a silencer just because funny stuff happens or make sure you have an exceptionally high quality silencer. Now that's coming from experts. My opinion for the type of shooting I've done I haven't needed a silencer, shooting the subsonic ammo, it's not even really loud, so we generally just run little plugs. Okay, so the first thing I did was I discarded the factory chassis, that's after I did the end cap. And I put it in this MDT LSS rimfire chassis in black. Now most of my rifles are FDE, so I thought I'd go all black of this one, and I must say it does look pretty fly. So. What I've also done to sort of simulate my match gun is I've added the MDT vertical grip onto the chassis. Let me see if I can, there we go. I added the vertical grip onto the chassis just so I can get that better trigger pull. That is something we have discussed in videos of the past. And what I've also done to modify the chassis and add a little bit more weight is I've added four M-lock weights on either side just to give me a little bit more weight and to balance this rifle out perfectly. Now you'll also notice I'm running the sky pod which gives me the adjustability I need on the fly. Let's say for example I had to engage a target off this barrel and if my bipod was on the front I wouldn't be able to manipulate my rear bag but with the sky pod I can simply move it back and now all of a sudden I can have a pretty good shooting position. Now to enable me to get that function I had to add an Arca Swiss rail. Now this is a rail we make ourselves here in South Africa. It's uh, but MDT also sell Arca rails for you guys watching in America. So I've added an APW Arca rail to that. The other modification I've done, I had Alfred from Bullet Central just fiddle with my trigger a little bit just to get it perfect how I like my triggers. I have ordered the Yo Dave trigger spring kit for the CZ455 but it hasn't arrived yet. So I will be trying that out and possibly do an update. Then another really important thing, you guys will recall if you've watched the other videos, we started off with a Diamondback Tactical on this. One of the big modifications I've also made is add a 20 MOA scope base from MDT. Now what I really like about that is 
that takes me away from the dovetail rings you're sort of forced to use with the um, the how the CZ action comes. It's got a dovetail mount. So this is actually a 20 MOA base that slips on over that dovetail and that allows you to use normal rings like these precision match rings that I've got on here from Vortex. And that really, what the nice feature about that really is that I can simply undo four screws, take this whole optic off without taking it out of its rings and put it on another rifle. This is now a 3 to 15 PST Gen 2 and uh, I used to have the 5 to 25 on but I've kind of swapped that over to the 6 Creed which we'll be shooting in a different video. So now I'm back to 5, 3 to 15 which is plenty for sort of the rimfire matches we're doing. So what are my final impressions on the CZ455? One, I think it's exceptional value for money. Obviously I've gone a little bit cray cray and pimped it out to basically the max that I can. If I really wanted to make it one step up, I could upgrade the optic to a raise or whatever. But for what I'm using it for, that's going to be a complete waste. Because the 3 to 15 for NRL Rimfire or NRL 22 competitions we're doing. By the way, if you haven't shot a National Rifle League Rimfire match, I'm going to link nrl22.org down below and hit us up on Facebook in South Africa if you're interested. Matches are popping up all over the world and uh, it's exceptionally fun and it's a really nice platform to refine your skill for when you take uh, on center fire course of fire. Anyway, so for my purposes, NRL 22, this has exceeded all expectations. The one thing I haven't mentioned is I also just upgraded the magazine to a, a 10 round magazine just because the course of fire requires 10 rounds per stage. I also have a spare magazine that I run in a little short action precision 22 long rifle little holder that sticks on the side. I can show you guys how that works. So it, we've got this little holder right here. So when I'm on a stage, let's for example say you got a light strike or you had a brain cramp and you haven't loaded enough ammo into your rifle, you can simply go from there and um, pop that in. Now, there's one thing I don't like about this configuration and that you will see here. So unfortunately due to the de design of the chassis and how this magazine system works because you've got a 22 long rifle mag, when you're engaging for example something, let's pop this empty mag in, make sure we're safe and let's chuck our game changer on there. Let's say we were just going to shoot off a little platform like this. Ideally you want to get that bag right here and then you're sort of pushing on your magazine. It's certainly absolutely not uh, a deal breaker but if I could change one thing that would be it. But it's kind of hard to do because of how everything has been designed and it would be stupid to have a massively deep mag well just for that. Anyway, so accuracy wise this rifle shoots at 30 yards, 40 yards like one whole groups. I've won every single match that I've entered with that rifle in its current configuration and uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. So value for money, yes, absolutely ticks that in its factory uh, configuration. Do you need to do all the upgrades? Certainly you do not need to. I've shot it in its wooden stock and also won a match like that. So it's a lot of fun. The real value I think is with the rimfire as a training tool. Because you can go through a little box of ammo, a box of 50, you can get lots of rounds down range and do quality training and it doesn't cost a fortune. So I think overall investing in a rimfire system is a wonderful idea. Now what I also like is I'm able to mimic my big centerfire match rifles in that configuration which is something that is very valuable to me because everything uh, mechanically on the rifle will work the same as on your big rifle. One thing to note though is if you shoot a lot of rim fire you actually get used to that little short bolt throw and then when you go to your big match rifle make sure you do a lot of dry fire after you've shot your rim fire because I end up short stroking my short action and the same thing happens when I shoot my short action 6.5 I short stroke my long action so yeah it's kind of one of those things that you kind of have to just be mentally aware of that you're now on a bigger rifle with a longer throw so yeah overall I think I'm I'm very happy with how this project came out so I don't think you'll regret getting a CZ455 this video is not sponsored by CZ it is however sponsored by our friends over at Modular Driven Technologies who make badass chassis systems like that so they're also linked down below make sure you give them a like 
and uh, go check out their products. They can provide you with the chassis system for pretty much any inlet that's out there. Um, unless you have something from like the 80s, then you're probably out of luck. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go check out part one and two. I'm gonna link that at the end of the video. Make sure you are subscribed down here. Tick that notification bell so you get notified when we upload new videos. We do so twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. I'm thinking of changing the Friday to a Thursday. But yeah, let me know if I should do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Share this video with a friend uh, if you're into the rimfire stuff or precision rifle stuff. We're on a mission to grow the channel to 10,000 subscribers. My goal is to get there before my birthday, which is on the 10th of April. So make sure you're sharing the videos and inviting your friends to subscribe to our channel. I appreciate you watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.